Yo, what's up good people? Welcome to this session as we continue with our series of integrating M-Pesa into our web and mobile applications. In this video, we'll discuss how we can handle the callback. So if that sounds interesting, let's dive right in. In the previous session, we saw how we can send an SDK push and after sending it, we got a response back and most of you are happy after that, but that's where the problem starts now. Remember the call you made to Safaricom was only responsible for sending the SDK push to the client. It does not deal with anything about how the transaction will be handled by that client. So in this video, we'll see how we can handle that. Also, you might receive an error while you are sending the SDK push, but most of the times the error is just on your end. So just check your code and in most cases, these are the, only, are the most common errors. Maybe there's a typo on, on the endpoint. Maybe there was uh, one of the parameters was not set well, or maybe the password was not generated well, or maybe there's an issue with just the token. But most of the time, the error is just on your end. And also, we say that if the SDK push is successful, that does not guarantee that the payment will succeed. And that is the whole reason for having this video here. We also said something about the callback URL, and we said that we'll discuss about it later. And I think this. Uh, it's a good time to discuss about it. So a valid callback URL should look should have this format. It should have this S here for security and this trailing and the correct path. And remember we can this cannot be sent to localhost because it is a request that comes on later. So if you provide localhost, the SDK push might I think it will just work. But now the callback will not be sent to you. It will be sent to the M-Pesa's computer because now that will now be their local host. So they are going to send the callback to their own machine. So it won't reach you and it will be a problem on your end because you are handling, a, you are handling something that is not reaching you. So if you want to develop on Sandbox, you can use the, there's a service, I think I wrote it somewhere. I think I, I forgot to write it. There's a service called I don't know it's called, I don't know how to pronounce it, I don't know whether it's ngrock or ngrock. So that one, it will give you a tunnel to your local host. So it's like you are temporarily deploying your application, it will give you a secure path which will work. After the user interacts with the SDK push and it's cleared on the, on the user's device screen, you will receive a post request to your callback URL with the following data, so depending on the outcome. So for a successful transaction, this is the, the data that you'll receive. And for a failed transaction, this is the data that, that you will receive. So when you're not receiving this, any of the two, if you're not receiving any of the two, uh, like it keeps failing and it's, it fails more than three times, just go back to your code. And, and a simple debug to that can be if you take the exact URL that you provided and go to any client like Postman, and write some dummy data and send and send it to that and to that URL. Uh, if you receive it in your console, then there's an issue with Safaricom. But if you don't receive your own request to your own callback URL, then you'll know that you're the problem. If the user has paid, you'll receive this. You can see there's this callback metadata here. And if the user has not paid or something happened, you'll receive this and you can see there is no the callback metadata. And the result code will be anything else rather than zero. Uh, that means that for the result code of zero indicates a successful transaction. So if the transaction has failed, this result code will be any other number apart from zero. And the description will be written there. For example, this one is for when a user has cancelled. In short, anything that happened and made the transaction to fail will be written here. But keep in mind that this one will come later with the callback and you cannot use this to tell the user on real time what's going on like on the front end part you can't tell the user immediately that the transaction has been failed that's why there is that other api that you talked about the one for the query that checks the status of the of the transaction and we will just see how we'll use that but i was just i just wanted to mention it here so that when you go we'll see how we can use that later but let us just focus on handling the callback now 
So this is what we'll get when a uh, transaction has failed. And let us now see how we can handle this data to make a decision on what to do with it. I have some code samples here in Node.js and Django. So I'll just explain this, it's just a simple code. So in I'll just explain this one for Node.js and we'll go through also the Python one. So for this, we'll first have to define our a post endpoint to handle the callback. So in this case here, you can see our callback URL will be the link to your website then slash callback. And for security purposes, your callback endpoint should be confidential because if it is known, it will be a target for hackers. As you have seen, the callback is going to be sent to us regardless of whether the user confirms the transaction or not. So we need to differentiate a successful transaction from a failed one. For this, we can check for the result code or check if the data includes the callback metadata because you have seen already that the failed one, you have seen up here that the failed one does not include the this callback metadata. It's not the end the failed one. So you can check that. So logically, we can write a condition to check if, as, if the result code is zero and handle that data as successful response. Else we can ha we'll handle it as a failed transaction. And the other way is that we can check if the body includes the callback metadata and handle that as a successful transaction else handle as a failed transaction. So there's two ways. I chose to use the one for the result code, but you can use either. So here in this line, I'm just saving the request body to this callback data variable. Then I'm getting the result code from this. So you can see from the data that in the body, there is this STK callback and that is and that object is one that has the result, the result code. So I'm getting this results, results code from this object and this is how I access the object there using the notion notation. Then after getting the result code, I, I, I put a condition here to check if the result is not zero because if the result is not zero, that's a, that's a failed transaction. So if the result is not zero, I'll just get the error message and we say that we get the error message from the result description. So I just get the error message, then just send that error message or you can just do anything you want with it. And also you have the result code with you also. And otherwise, it's a successful transaction, so you can just uh, have access to this callback metadata. And you have seen that this callback metadata has things like uh, the amount paid, the receipt number, and the balance, the phone number, and the transaction date. Uh, you can just save those in variables, and you can just use these variables or just save the, the variables to a database, anything that you want to do with it. So this is how you handle the, the callback. And the same thing is with with Python, I used Django here, so you can just go through that. And I also provided some security security tips, but you have, re you have already mentioned this. So yeah, that's how you handle callback. So I'll see you in the next video where we'll discuss about the query SDK API. Peace out.